And ahead of Saturday's governorship election in Edo State, Governor Godwin Obaseki of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Pastor Sagye Izeyamu, have pledged their commitment to violence-free elections and vow to accept the results. They made the pledge at the signing of the peace deal held at the Obakenzoa Cultural Center, Benin. The peace deal was brokered by the chairman of the National Peace Committee and former head, General Abdusalami Abubakar, retired, and also the bishop of the Sokoto Diocese of the Catholic Church, Bishop Matthew Kuka. Security is a major concern ahead of uh, Saturday's polls with fears of clashes between rival supporters as witnessed during campaigns. And we are now joined by a public affairs analyst, Chukuma Okenwa. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Pleasure. The two candidates meeting for a peace accord sounds positive with, uh, of course, the fears surrounding the elections. How serious do you think this will be taken? Uh, well, like you know, uh, this uh, peace pact was signed uh, by the, the, the major opponents, uh, but not their rival supporters. And of course, the supporters were not carried along in any way. And I don't think uh, I've seen any significant thing on ground to communicate the supporters to even understand the terms of the peace pact. Because Nigerians here, oh, we signed a peace pact, but then the content of it, in as much as it has not been open to many Nigerians, what about those supporters that don't understand this peace impact? And it is very important for us to note that during elections, the violence is not created by the candidates, but by their supporters. And of course, judging from all that has been happening uh, during the campaign process, one should be afraid, should be scared of the possible outcome uh, come uh, 19th of September. Considering all that has been happening, you know, it calls for worries. And just like the INEC boss, uh, why, when he was asked to give some measure of assurances, you know, he made a very technical statement that they can only assure people of the efforts they are making to ensure a peaceful election, but not the possible outcome. So I want to align myself uh, with the thought of the Annette boss. Yes, they have made efforts. They are sure of that. But whatever becomes, if that must be respected by the supporters, then enough effort has to be, you know, to be put in place to communicate the details of those pacts to the supporters. How, how do you think the supporters could have been better carried along? Uh, you know, you know, information is one thing. Education is yet another level and a greater level. So I think that the Peace Pact community would have also done well realizing the fact that this will not be the first time that Peace Pacts were signed in the country and people committed various mayhems. And interestingly, nobody was brought to book on account of electoral violence. We've seen the U.S. Uh, speak like before, you know, a possible uh, visa, visa ban on people that we lead like some of these uh, 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 violence and all the rest. But this, we know, does not deter politicians because they know they will always go, uh, go away without, you know, uh, you know, have their way, they do what they want to do, and at the end of the day, nobody suffers for some of this. So if, like, over the time, like maybe in the previous elections, we can point one or two persons, the proponents of electoral violence that were brought to book, this would have served as a possible deterrent. But guess what? These supporters are told that they have their backs covered. And with that kind of system where criminals are free to walk around, there is no way we can expect justice. There is no way we can expect people to do the right thing. So I would have expected that part of it would be that this time around we'll be very serious with those persons. We don't even need to, you know, you know we waited for U.S. to be the first to lead this particular uh, uh, proposal. But I believe before now the government would have been able to stipulate stiffer measures that we put in place for those that we actually go ahead to make Saturday elections unsafe and the result unfair. That should have been put in place before now. And then National Orientation Agency must rise at this particular point. Educate people on community level and then part of the pact would have been to compare the candidate themselves. We need to see them preaching peace to their supporters. That should be part of what we should see at this particular point, you know, come up, you know, make strong statements on the need for them not to, because sometimes the simple truth is that even when the, the, the candidates do not support violence or do not ask people to do violence on their behalf, 
you see over, you know, people that are over zealous that feel that their life is tied to this person's candidacy. Who may want to, on their own, carry out acts of violence? All but right. the candidate can do a whole lot to say that we are in full support, in full solidarity with this new wave to ensure that we have, you know, freer elections, safer elections okay. come 19 September 2019, 2020. All right. One of the things that, you know, they also um, uh, uh, vowed to accept um, is the result of the elections. Uh, does this in any way, from your explanation, mean that the candidates would not be going to court after the elections? You know, that, that, that's, that's what it literally means. But then I, I would not understand the rationale for that because in the global best practices, as long as democracy is concerned, when someone feels that, you know, he was unfairly treated, the result, the, the outcome of the result is not, a, a, he's not satisfied with the result, the next place to seek for redress should be to go to the courts. If someone is not satisfied or for whatever reason feels that there is a challenge, even for developed democracies who seem like people not accepting outcomes of results, and then the next thing, like even like the last uh, U.S. election, you understand? We know the number of years it took for you know, the Democrats to actually accept the outcome of the result. It took the judiciary to, to step in. So I believe it's part of the democratic process for the judiciary to do the needful. So I would expect that if any party is not satisfied, you understand, they should show it by going to the courts. I believe that will help to deepen our democracy. It doesn't right. necessarily mean shying away from responsibility. If you are not satisfied with the result, you go to the court. I'm satisfied with that, and that is what is expected. And I'm, I'm sure you've also followed the whole campaign period. Um, and of course, uh, saw you know the issue-based campaigns. You know, if they were uh, available in the campaign period, what would you be saying to the people of Edo states today, um, from what you've seen all through the campaign period? Well, politics is a context of ideas, and most importantly, uh, uh, do people should be able to look beyond the campaign promises, the manifestos of different individuals the different parties, because over the time we've seen that Nigerian both as parties and as, as, as candidates have not demonstrated commitment to either the party manifestos and ideology, if there is any party that have such ideologies. But then they should be able to like bank on the track record of those politicians to be able to see if what they are saying align with the life of leadership they have led before now. Because I always tell people, you are not going to build a reputation based on what you will do, but based on what you've done in time past, your track records. So Nigerian uh, 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 citizens must go beyond just assessing politicians based on their promises. Because what these politicians do, like we've seen, is meet some consultants who will develop manifestos for them. In some cases, they do not even understand the implications of what they are saying. Like we've seen in this country where a politician will say, I'm going to create 3 million jobs in a year. If you ask the person how he's going to do that, he doesn't know. All he wants is to win an election. And in some cases, you even see them trying to counter themselves, saying, I never said anything like that. So that means we must not really, you know, want to hold politicians, our politicians, based on what they say, because they even forget they are not committed to what they say. But one thing is certain. Check the track records of a man, and you can tell what his future is going to look like. And I think that should work in our own instance as Nigerians. All right. Um, I, I was hoping, you know, you could also quickly share your thoughts. If you can, please, as quickly as possible, share your thoughts on the, the influence of uh, um, Abdul Salami Abubakar, uh, Bishop Matthew Kuka, and, uh, of course, maybe also the Oba of Benin. Um, would th these personalities be able to influence the, the people of Edo State to ensure that it is a peaceful election? Um, if, you know, the candidates have failed to do so, as quickly as you can? Well, I think, uh, ju judging by like, uh, this also wouldn't be the first time we are seeing the likes of Kuka and uh, Abdul Salami in assignments such as this. But like, as I said, the supporters in some cases, they already have a frame of mind. These are those that over that time live their life through violence. But what is even more worrisome is that people go, the perpetrators are allowed to move freely, both before, during the election, and after the election. Because if we want to do things differently this time around, I would have expected, even during the campaign processes, that we saw some persons who volunteered themselves as candidates for violence. 
they should have been, you know, you know, you know, you know, been in the it maybe, you know, detained by now. You understand? So that some others will be detained. But if we are not ready to do anything differently, you get uh, Bishop Kuka, get uh, the Oba and all the rest of it. I don't really see anything change in that regard because the, the, the simple truth is that the, the, the best incentive you can give to, to crime is to allow criminals to move about without repercussions. All right. And that's what we've seen. So if Bishop Kuka and Abdul Salami is ready to do anything, then using diplomacy, they would have been able to get the FG to see that even those that have demonstrated threats of violence are remanded in custody until after the election. That would be the safest way and the, right. the, the, the highest diplomatic way to ensure okay. that what we've seen the signs does not uh, you know, come to fruition as a full-blown violence Thank you comes very up much. to their elections. So Chukuma, what okay, I suggest well. is we should be able to nip those signs from the board instead of just uh, you know, disregarding it as it doesn't really matter why even those that will make the election violent would be part of the process. And what will they bring to the table? Certainly, from their track records, certainly from their CV, they have All made right. up their we're, mind to bring violence. We're out of and time. a lot uh, more can be done to stop that. Chukumau, okay, well, thank you so much for speaking with us and uh, looking forward to having another conversation. Thank you so much. You.